What's up guys, Intellitech Studios here, and it's a very thunderstormy and lightning-y and rainy-y day. I hope those are words. So, since we're locked inside anyways, let's review the brand new Shark Stratos. Now, this particular machine came out just about a month ago, and I've been using it as my daily driver ever since I acquired it a couple weeks ago. And, overall, my thoughts are still fairly mixed. Now, we, all, we'll, we will get into different portions uh, in this review that will all be, hopefully, if I can remember, timestamped in the description, so that way, if you're watching this review for something specific, hopefully you won't get intimidated by the long runtime and be able to click on the part that you're specifically looking at. The first thing we're going to... Sorry, I'm getting tongue-tied. The first thing we're going to discuss is the price. This particular machine retails for $4.99, and there is a much uglier, like, purplish plum colored variant. I'm not sure what that color is. Uh, this is the blue color that's much nicer, and I recommend getting this one. But if you do get the other color, it usually is cheaper depending on the bundle that you get. And you can get bundles of these with different attachments depending on what retailer you go to. And if you buy it on Shark's website, you can get a True Pet bundle, which comes with a lot of extra accessories and even a steam mop in addition. But we're just going to focus on the machine itself because even though I ordered the True Pet bundle, for whatever reason, I didn't get the extra attachments nor the steam mop. The steam mop I didn't really expect to get, but the attachments I didn't get, even though the representative on the phone specifically told me that I was going to be getting those attachments, and that issue still has not been resolved. So if you're buying this directly from the Shark website, your mileage may vary as far as the accessories included. And based on looking at the Amazon reviews of Shark vacuums in the past, including this one, there have been some mixed results as far as people receiving the attachments that were advertised. So be careful about that. You want to make sure that you get all the accessories that come with your machine, because if you don't, you're going to have a relatively incomplete cleaning experience. My version of the Shark Stratos came with three attachments, which is a little odd because it came with the two onboard attachments, which includes a upholstery tool with a swiveling neck, so you can adjust this to whatever you need, and it came with a crevice tool that is fairly basic. Just a basic crevice tool. Both of these attachments do push onto these little pegs on the back of the machine, and they can get loose, but they do hold pretty okay. I haven't had any real issues with them falling off and they just kind of sit on there. Now this can sometimes get in the way of the cord, but that's about it. The other attachment that I received is I received this turbo brush. Now this turbo brush is a Powerfin Hair Pro turbo brush, and this is generally only included with the True Pet bundle, but like I mentioned, I didn't get the attachments from the True Pet bundle, despite it's supposed to having came with several dusting brushes, a under appliance wand, and this turbo brush. I only got the turbo brush. So this turbo brush, it does work pretty okay. There isn't much to say about it. Generally speaking, these rubber bristles don't do the best job at removing hair, but for something like upholstery, when upholstery isn't really a deep pile carpet or anything like that, I haven't had noticed haven't had noticed any real issues with this in terms of functionality. When you run this on the setting here, I'll demonstrate this real quick. So when you run this turbo brush with the hose on the thick carpet setting, which is generally what I leave my vacuum on for my carpeting, I find that the air that it bleeds through this valve will actually cause the turbo brush to stop when it's applied to certain surfaces. So if you have issues with your turbo brush stopping whenever you're using it, then you want to push this dial either to the carpet's low pile setting or to the hard floor setting. And I'll demonstrate that right now. When you want to release the hose from the machine, you press this button right here that says handle release. and that allows the hose to pop out. Then you want to take this turbo brush, which does not store on board the machine, so you will have to store this in a closet or somewhere else in the drawer. Just pushes on, and then you turn the vacuum on, no matter what mode you're using with this power button right here, and there's this switch that adjusts between thick carpet area rug, carpet low pile, and hard floors, and the difference there is whether or not this gate opens. So we're going to start off with this on thick carpet because this is what I generally leave this on and turn this on. You can hear 
hear the air escaping. So as you can see, the turbo brush works the best when it's on the hard floor setting, when it, on the wand, which is, or on the handle, which is a bit ironic, but that is the best way to get it to spin up the most and not stop as much whenever you're on your upholstery, although that does make it run faster and therefore louder, so keep that in mind. But if for whatever reason you don't like this tool, which I personally don't because I find it to be very loud, then you can use your standard upholstery tool as well, which does have a swiveling neck. So if you want to use it at an angle like this, you can do that. Or if you want to twist this around like this and have it be angled like that, you can do that as well. Now I find when I'm using the attachments, the, su the suction combined with the very large awkward handle and the very stiff hose means that this isn't very comfortable to hold right here even though this is padded because the angle you're holding at it at is very awkward. It's not as bad if you have your hand anchored at the bottom joint right here, but you're still holding a lot of that weight in your hands. So I might, I find myself just grabbing it by this part right here, which is very bulky and big because there's electrical connectors running through here, but that does make it a bit easier in my opinion. I don't know if you could see that, but this machine likes to pull over even though I have this in the direction where the hose is closest to the couch. Even with this machine right next to the couch, oh, my tripod just messed up. Even with this machine right next to the couch, it'll still fall over. And I find myself constantly trying to essentially hold this with one hand and then hold the vacuum in the other hand out of frame so that way I can actually stretch out this hose because this hose while it is better than the previous apexes and all the previous power lift away sharks it is a decent improvement it does stretch a lot more it's still very stiff so whenever I'm using the attachments on this I find that I can't actually vacuum the top of my couch because again this will just fall over now sharks proposed solution to this is that you use it in lift away mode which is where you press the power lift away button and essentially remove the power head and the wand from the machine and the idea is that you then carry this or presumably just set it on your couch where again it, it falls over and that wasn't me like I was just trying to you see so it's it's not it's not very well balanced so while the actual attachments do work, um, first off, there's no dusting brush included, despite the fact that it was I was told that I would be getting dusting brushes. There is supposed to be a version of this crevice tool with a dusting brush attached to it that slides up and down, very similar to the Dyson variant. And this exact upholstery tool literally is designed to have a brush piece attached to it. There is a variant where a brush clips in holds in right here on this little tab and clips on and then that's a nice big dusting brush but for some reason that part is missing and it's not a manufacturing defect because according to the manual and the box these three attachments are what my model was supposed to come with even though my machine is the model number that's supposed to come with the true pet bundle mine is the model number AZ3002 you can see that right there AZ3002 it's the W model that's supposed to be the bare bones model. This is supposed to be the model that comes with the attachments, and I didn't get those. So uh, my $500 vacuum didn't come with any way to do any sort of dusting um, whatsoever. So 
if you spend $500 on this machine, at least in my case, on Shark's website, if you get it from Shark, um, you are not going to have any way to do any dusting unless you buy those tools separately. So if you're wondering why I didn't review the dusting brush that your machine may have came with, your Stratos, it's because for whatever reason mine didn't come with it and Shark is not interested in giving me those attachments even though it was advertised that it would come with those. So I'm disappointed that there is no dusting brush that comes standard with this machine, but the good news is, is while shark attachments aren't a standard inch and a quarter fitting, because of how popular sharks are, you can get dusting brushes separately and you can get them from third party companies or from shark directly, even if they're designed for other models, they all have the same fitting. So you can get a dusting brush for this and I'm going to look for one after this video and if I find one, I'll link it in the description for those of you that are in my situation. So you'll, that is an added expense, unfortunately, at least with this model despite what it says on the website. But the good news is that if you don't need, care about having a dusting brush, the other three attachments that this comes with do work very well. The crevice tool is pretty minor, it's pretty basic, just get some crevices and all that stuff. Uh, there's no suction relief holes on the crevice tool, but that's not a, a problem at all, because you actually do have suction relief on this handle, which I do like, that's actually something that I wish the, the uh, Dyson had, but this does have it. So you can adjust the suction with all three of these attachments. And the upholstery tool has some suction relief holes on the side as well. So the attachments that this comes with, while they're not as easy to replace as other machines, you can get into a pretty decent attachment ecosystem with Shark. And the attachments that it comes with are fine. This turbo brush does leave a little bit to be desired, but it does still work. I do find myself needing to pass over uh, hair a couple times to get it, but it's still perfectly passable. But I find myself just using this instead. A lot of dirt and hair can get stuck on these little lint pickers, but this attachment is all plastic so it's easy enough to wash it. And same with any of these other attachments, you can just wash them. Of course this you want to take apart, which you can do. You just grab one of these little black tabs on the side and pop this open. So that way if you get anything stuck in here, you can very easily clear it out. And this is better build quality than the previous generation of turbo brushes. And this actually works better than the motorized pet brush that came with the rotator powered lift away and the early apexes. So if you have one of those powered tools and you're worried about it working, first of all, first of all, they do work. So if you have an old powered turbo brush from your NV752, or your Apex, whether it's an Apex or an Apex Zero M, uh, those will work on the Stratos. I did test mine and it does work, but this one works better anyways, although it is louder. So you do have a few options there as far as turbo brushes, if this one doesn't suffice or for whatever reason it doesn't come with your Stratos. So I lightly touched on the power to lift away functionality in the previous attachment portion, but I will show it off a little bit more. So this is your power head, which we'll discuss more later. Here we have our wand, which you release by pressing the wand release button. And you attach the wand to the handle like this. And so you can use this in power to lift away mode with just the wand and an attachment on the end. So the idea is that if you are using this for above floor cleaning, you can put an attachment on the end like this and you can theoretically get up into crevices and all that. But my problem, and I'll turn the camera upwards so you can kind of see this better. So, I'm trying to see how I can angle this. Uh, it's being difficult. So my problem with this design, this, this might fall, but my problem, oh, I had clothes there, I didn't know that. Okay, well, I'll show you down here. So my problem with this is that when you're trying to get either down into corners, that's fine. Because even with carrying this, this is pretty heavy. But you can get down into corners and do all that stuff. Or up here, you can get into crevices and all that. But again, this wand weighs a good amount because, it ha because it's metal and it has all this extra hardware. And you can see that didn't even click in. 
Uh, not to mention you have a lot of sharp edges here that can potentially scratch furniture. But not only that, but this combined with the handle design means that this is kind of weighty in the hand. So trying to get up into crevices and corners and all that, while it is possible, it's not comfortable to do. Uh, even if you're using this in lift away mode, which you're expected to do, this hose still doesn't stretch very much. So this, this hose doesn't have a lot of stretch to it. So you're going to be struggling to actually use this for above floor cleaning, at least based on my experience. And it's not all that pleasant to use for above floor cleaning for that reason. And also, the way the attachments fit inside the wand means that you get dirt and dust all over the attachments, which is not very hygienic. Although, again, like I mentioned, you can wash the attachments or just wipe them down with a wipe, so that's not the end of the world. But once you're done using it in lift away mode, which will presumably be very quickly because it's a very awkward to use, you can take this canister and clip it back on and you can take the wand with the hose and slide it in until it clicks into place and then once you do that you can clip the cord into the cord hook right here and keep it out of the way but remember you have to unclip this come on remember you have to unclip this cord out of here before you try to remove the wand so keep that in mind. I've heard some people complain about that, but that doesn't really bother me because obviously I don't usually use the wand anyways. I only just use the hose because of how awkward the wand is. And it really hurts my back to use the wand or the lift away mode in general. So I just find myself not using the attachments all that much on this, which is kind of part of the selling point. So that's not great. But there is one advantage to this design and to the powered lift away more specifically. You've got this button right here that says powered lift away and you can press that. And now you can actually leave the power head attached and recline it. And now because the canister isn't in the way, or I should say because the motor assembly isn't in the way, it basically functions like a canister now where you can then get underneath stuff more easily. Now, of course, my couch is just a little bit too low for it to be effective, but that is a pretty good selling point of these machines. You do have a good amount of versatility that way, but the main problem is that when you're trying to use it in this mode, the dual clean head will actually pull itself forward a fair amount, and also this is very heavy to carry. This is not lightweight at all. So even just holding it for this segment, my arm and my hand are very strained. So it's really not recommended for you to use that for long-term vacuuming and only to use it for getting underneath furniture and stuff like that. And truth be told, uh, I moved my couches out of the way. I have animals and everything. I have a dog, two cats, and then my roommate has two cats. So I pulled my couches out the other day for the first time in maybe like six months and there actually wasn't hardly any dirt underneath the couches so I don't really see how that really is as big of a selling point as people claim for it to be other than just the convenience of not feeling like you have to move your furniture every once in a while to do it uh, but again if you if your furniture is slightly off the more off the ground than mine is then you may very well appreciate that feature and it definitely is a good feature but the lift away mode is really only useful in that scenario because the actual motor assembly is so much heavier than the cheaper navigator lift aways it's just not practical i mean after just using it for that short time just for the video my back is hurting really bad so if you have back or shoulder issues then this machine in general is just not for you but the lift away is there if you want it it just doesn't have a long enough hose for it to really supersede the convenience of having a more stretchable hose on something like the equivalent Dyson. Before we talk about the deep cleaning performance of the Shark Stratos, I am going to do a really quick pickup test. Now this will be more of a torture test than a pickup test because just like every other dual clean Shark, this machine excels on bare floors 
and there really isn't much else to say about it other than it does a good job. So we're going to be focusing on carpets because that was the main area that needed improvements from the previous generation Apex Vertex. So we are going to go ahead and do a pickup test. This is mostly shredded paper as well as potato flakes. Now this is an extreme test. This is not very practical, but it's one of the things that you see a lot on the advertising of this machine that it can handle bigger messes. So let's see how well it handles, handles it. We're going to be doing this on the high carpet mode. So we're gonna see how well it does just for fun. Now again, this isn't indicative of deep cleaning performance. I'll talk about that afterwards. This is more so just to see how it copes with it. Okay, so based off of the first pass results, we can see that it actually did a fairly good job at the surface debris. So all of that did handle itself pretty well. We're going to rub the carpet and see if uh, anything is left. So there were some of the finer potato flake particulates left, so that result seems to be roughly in, in line with the previous generation Apexes, where it actually does leave some of the flakes behind, so even at picking up the surface level flakes, it still didn't quite extract all of them. But if you're just looking at the paper, it looks like it did a pretty good job. So bigger debris, it does pretty good with. It's smaller, fine particles like dust and sand, that is much more important for a vacuum to pick up that it just really seems to struggle with, at least on carpets. So we're gonna go ahead and go through the rest of this mess and talk a little bit more about the overall performance. So, the Stratos, as we can see, if we remove the dust cup, which the dust cup release button is right here, now this, the large debris does demonstrate a problem that these machines do have with their bin setup. You can remove the top by pressing these two buttons. You can see a lot of the debris got stuck in this top section. So a lot of that can be a problem. You want to make sure that this cone is clean and you can empty the main bin by pressing this black lever right here and the bin drops out. Now the actual max fill line is somewhere down here. It's really hard to see with all this debris in here. But the max fill line is actually all the way down there. So according to Shark, the capacity on this is very small. But as long as you don't fill up this section right here with this cone, this little cyclone, then you can fill this entire section as well as this section back here. So the capacity of it is better than the previous Apex from what I can tell. It's at least no worse. So 
the capacity on this is pretty good, but there is no cyclone, which is fine. It does mean that you can very easily wash out this entire bin, which I will show how to do in the next video, as well as I'll show you how to wash the filters in the next video. But for now, it'll show you where they are and tell you when you need to change them. So emptying the bin, I just mentioned how to do it. Press this button. You can open up this top section, clean everything out, pull everything out. Make sure this little screen, this little blue screen right here, is clean and you can wash out this entire bin if you want let it dry for 48 hours if you do now there's three filters on the shark stratos and shark recommends cleaning these filters at least these filters every month so this filter right here is a foam filter and unfortunately this machine still has a lot of the problems that other sharks have as you can see after just a little bit of usage the filter is pretty filthy and discolored we can see there's actually hair and other debris on the filter. It's kind of hard to focus on it, but you can see there's a lot of black hair. And my dog normally sheds her white undercoat, so there's white hair too, but you can't really see it as well. And you can see that hair is embedded in the filter. So once hair gets in a filter like this, one of these film filters, it's actually very hard to get that stuff out of it. So that means you'll, you'll have to wash these filters more often and you can see it's all that dust has already gone through to the second layer. And unfortunately, the back layer is discolored too. So that's dust that's going into the motor, but it it's not too bad. We can see this also needs to be washed. So you need to wash both of these every month. Although depending on your usage, if you're using this every day, then you may want to wash these every uh, two weeks perhaps uh, or just I recommend checking and washing these every time you empty the bin I mean after all they literally sit right here when you take the bin off so there's no excuse not to check these and clean them as they get dirty and even if you do wash these every month I still recommend changing these filters every year or two because when you wash foam filters they do deteriorate over time which will cause them to fall apart and let dust and let dust through and this pad filter is particularly bad quality even out of the box we can see where the filter is actually shedding on the underside which means there are little fibrous things that are actually getting sucked into the motor and that's putting the motor off balance and causing it to run very loud on my unit and it's a problem that sharks have had for ages so that is something that's not very good and we'll talk more about warranty later on in this review but the good news is that these filters are easy enough to pull out you can wash them with soap or whatever water you prefer. I recommend spraying these down once with a degreaser and letting it sit for a while before wringing these out. You want to wring both of these filters out and let them dry for at least 48 hours before putting them back in. The small felt pad goes underneath, the foam filter goes on top. So you can see you put this little pad in first, then the foam filter, and then finally the bin goes on. Now the bin can be a little tricky to get on, but once you line it up down here, that will allow it to snap back into place. But I have found that sometimes it's a little bit tricky to get it on, but as long as you kind of hook it on the front first, then click it on, it attaches just fine. Now underneath here is a HEPA filter. So we can see right here, there's a little hook right under here that we just pull off, and here is our filter cover. This is our HEPA filter. Now, you generally want to check and change this HEPA filter about every year or two. Now, Shark says that these filters are washable. Um, I don't find that to be true exactly, but these are more washable than some other HEPA filters, if that makes any sense. Uh, I still would recommend just changing this filter, and I generally recommend that by the time this filter needs changed, you probably will want to change your pre-motor filters as well, so just buy a whole set. I will find, or I'll at least try to find a set of these filters in the description. This vacuum might be too new, but if I can find a set of these filters, I will link it in the description. And this just hooks on like this, and clicks into place, and you can put that back on until it clicks into place. This little bit is very wiggly, but since the actual seal on the filter is pretty okay, I don't think that'll have any problems. This vacuum is a sealed system, but it is also a bagless system, so I recommend only emptying this 
uh, either outside or empty it whenever you first change your trash bags. So that way there, it's less likely for dust to slide out and splash. But unfortunately, the way this dust cup is designed, it's, it's very difficult to empty this without dust getting everywhere. So I really would recommend just emptying this outside. And if you have allergies or if you have issues with pet dander or anything like that, then you have to empty this outside or else you will get those particles back into your room and it will harm your lungs and your breathing. So you definitely don't want that. You're trying to get rid of this stuff, so empty it outside if you can. So now that we've talked about the maintenance as far as the filters and all that, let's take a look at the star of the show, the Duo Clean Power Fins Hair Pro Brush Roller, which is just as complicated as it is a mouthful to say. So let's take a look at that real quick. So this is the new power head on the new Shark Stratos. Now the way that this works is there are two brush rollers that spin at the same time any time that the brush roller is engaged. This is any time that you have the head reclined, both of these brushes are spinning. Even when you have this on the bare floor mode, both of these brushes are spinning when you have it reclined. The only time these brushes aren't spinning is when it is upright. So the brushes will shut off when it, it's upright so that way you're not causing any scratching to your floors or any debris to get kicked around while your machine is in tool mode or just otherwise standing upright. So if you look at this, there is our main brush roll right here. Now, this is different than the previous generation Shark brush rollers, and I actually have the cleaner head from the previous generation Apex to compare it to. But if we look at the Stratos compared to the Apex, the, the Vertex is basically the same design as the Stratos, so we're just focusing on the Apex. We can see that on the previous Apex, uh, in both cases we have two brush rollers, but in the case of the Apex, we have a much more standard brush roller, and we have a little guard that we can remove with these two buttons and pop off this cover. So this cover had little teeth that would essentially cut the hair off of the brush roller, and we could actually remove this, so that way if any hair or anything did get stuck in here, or more likely if any objects or of a clog or anything like that got stuck in here we could pop this off and clean it out we also had actual stiff bristles which is what you need in order to properly clean carpets now we do have these little fins here which are designed to keep the hair from tangling too tightly on the brush and we also have our soft roller right here on the apex which can be ejected by pulling this tab right here and it's recommended that you pop out the soft roller on both of these machines to make sure there's nothing stuck in these teeth or anything wrapped around the roller. Or if you're using this for any extended period of time, dust will get on this roller and will make it dirty. So every time you empty the bin, I recommend ejecting this soft roller and wiping it down with a damp cloth so you can get all the dust off it. Otherwise, you're wiping that dirty dust all over your, supposedly, your floor that you're supposedly trying to clean. So that doesn't work all that well although it is effective at cleaning bare floors and dusting them, so that is nice. And this just pops back in, just like that. And this little top cover, once you clear out your obstruction, can be popped back on. So all of that is nice, but on the Stratos, we don't have the ability to pop off this top cover. We don't have any way to get underneath into this brush roller at least not the consumer. So if you get anything jammed in this brush roll where there's a very tight gap, if you get anything jammed in this brush roll, then you're done. There's nothing that you can do. This brush roller is not able to be disassembled. There is no way to pull a cover off and get access to this brush roll. So if you get anything stuck to it, uh, or stuck in this section right here, you're pretty much out of luck. Now you can pull out this little pipe right here and stick your finger through to make sure there isn't anything blocked in there. But if you get something really jammed in there, then you're gonna have a hard time getting that taken care of. Now, one thing that is a very bad design with this Stratos is, as we can see, there are brushes on here, thankfully. They are very soft, though. These brushes are not effective at agitating carpet, and neither are the power fins. 
Now the power fins are designed as if these are able to agitate carpet, and when the machine is running you do hear a noise that almost sounds as if the brush is being agitated on the carpet. But this just simply isn't the case. This is not agitating the carpet well, and you don't have any real way of this removing effectively any sort of hair, dirt, or debris from carpets. Now, it will do decently at removing hair, so I guess I could uh, amend that portion of what I just said, but as far as fine dust and sand, it will get some up out of carpets, but it's not effective at deep cleaning carpets. Now, I've seen a lot of testing where people will take a very low-grade commercial pile rug, usually like a very, very thin rug, usually black in color or just otherwise a low-pile carpet, and they will embed sand into that carpet by basically just dumping a bunch of sand on it and pushing it into the carpet and then vacuuming over it and basically using that result to determine whether or not this machine deep cleans. And that's just not effective. Number one, even in those tests, from what I remember seeing, this didn't perform as nearly as well as other vacuums. And while I do feel like it's not necessarily that much worse than the previous Apex, it is still worse for a couple of reasons. The first being that embedding sand in a carpet is not indicative of the actual em em embedding action that sand and other debris goes through when it gets embedded in your carpets. The more accurate way to test this would be to lightly sprinkle sand all over a deeper pile carpet in an actual living room and walk on it normally for at least a week or two weeks because that is generally the time that people will take in between their vacuuming sessions. Most people vacuum every week. So this machine needs to be able to pull up that debris that's been in the carpet for a week and it's just not capable of doing that and unfortunately Shark has not made many inroads and this brush roller design is not helping. We can also see there is some debris that has gotten stuck in this area that me manually rolling the brush roller has dislodged. So we can also see that there is a lot of debris on this soft roller right here. So we can see a lot of that debris that we just vacuumed up actually got caught in these combs back here. Now, just like the apex that I showed you, you can press this red button and this soft brush roller pops out. You can see it literally jumps out and you can pop this out. Now I recommend again wiping this off with a damp cloth. You can see I'm just brushing some of the dust off of it. But wipe this off with a damp cloth every time you empty the bin and make sure that this little section right here is clean because as, as you can see a lot of debris will get stuck in here. So while this soft roller does great on bare floors and this brush roller actually does better on bare floors too because there is less of it to scratch bare floors that has the opposite effect on carpets. So whenever you're using this on carpets since it's so nice on bare floors and doesn't scratch bare floors because of how soft this brush roller design is that makes the opposite problem on carpets where it doesn't clean well and it's not a substitute for a better cleaning vacuum on carpets at least. So this brings an interesting polarization into the question of this shark as far as whether or not that's my knee <laughs> as far as whether or not this is a good cleaner because that will depend on what type of surface you have this shark does clean very well on bare floors thanks to this soft roller and the more softer brush roll design of this stratos but it does way worse on carpeting than other machines because these power fins do not agitate. And these power fins also, if you notice, the actual middle doesn't have any brushes. You can see there's a brush that goes here, and then on this side there's a brush that goes here, which means this section right here has nothing agitating it. Which means the section where you actually have the air go into the passageway, you're not cleaning that section which means that even when you overlap an area on your carpet, you actually have to go over that same area maybe two or three times with the head slightly off to one direction, so you're cleaning the portion that otherwise didn't get touched. Nobody in any of their reviews of the Stratos has mentioned this. This is a very interesting flaw with this cleaner head, where the brushes don't actually extend to where the cleaning path is, where the actual intake is, so this area of the cleaner head is not getting cleaned at all. 
these power fins are not doing anything as far as agitation other than scooping up surface debris, which that it does very well, which is why these do so well in surface debris. And if you have bare floors, or if you have exclusively very, very low pile carpets, then this could certainly suffice. But if you have anything beyond a very thin pile area rug, this is not going to keep that clean. So keep that in mind when you're looking at this. This design is not very aided very well for cleaning carpeting, and it's actually a step backwards from the previous Apex Zero M, which already wasn't a good carpet cleaner to begin with. So the carpet cleaning results after my extended period of time have been rather disappointing, uh, and that is a bit upsetting because this $500 machine is not that effective at cleaning carpets. And we can see there is also a lot of debris that gets stuck back here in this area behind the soft roller. We can see all that dust. So you want to make sure to clean this out on occasion and keep this clean, otherwise you're going to have problems with it. So that just goes back in, just like that. Hear that click? Now it's back in all the way. We do have a nice felt strip on the back which does a good job at sealing it on hard floors and these wheels are actually uh, coated in a very nice rubbery fabric material that I really like. These wheels were prone to breaking on the Apex, on this Apex, so it appears that these have been made out of a bit of better quality and it looks like they're easier to replace as well. Uh, Shark doesn't make these parts available separately, they, they make you buy the entire power head unless it's this soft roller. So if you have any issues with your power head, uh, your only option, at least officially from Shark, is to buy another power head. It's not even covered under warranty, which is really bad. So we're going to talk about that more in the warranty segment, which will be coming up next. But that's pretty much it as far as the power head. All of this is designed very well when it comes to bare floors, other than you having to clean this out. Uh, it's, but as far as carpets, again, it does leave a lot to be desired if you want to keep your carpets deep cleaned. One other thing I forgot to mention about this brush roller is the fact that whenever you first turn this on and recline it, the brush roller starts out by spinning very slowly and you have to give it at least 5 or 10 seconds for the brush to actually get up to the proper speed which means whenever you're trying to vacuum carpets, you have to sit there and let the vacuum wait for 10 seconds before the brush roller actually gets up to the optimal speed. Uh, that's probably due to the fact that this is driving two brush rollers, which is causing a lot of tension and stress on the brush roll motor, but that is pretty much that. Now, the last thing we're gonna talk about in regards to the power head is something that attaches to the power head, and it's actually the flagship feature of the Stratos, and that is the odor neutralizing cartridge. So to remove this cartridge, you flip this up, turn it until the arrows match up, and pull it out. So this, oop. so this cartridge is replaceable, and Shark recommends changing this every six months. Now, I actually really like this cartridge. It smells really good. It's not really strong, so if you're sensitive to things like Febreze smelling or anything like that, I actually find that it's not as potent as those smells. So if you're sensitive to the sort of fake smells that a lot of air fresheners have, I don't think this will be as bad, uh, so that definitely is a positive. And yes, people have complained about the fact that you have to change this every six months, but there's nothing making you change it. You can very easily just allow this to run out and, n and not replace it if you don't care about the odor neutralizing technology. So I don't really see how this is any sort of drawback, it's just an extra benefit that you can utilize if you so choose. Now my model was supposed to come with two extra cartridges and it didn't so again your mileage may vary as far as what you actually get with your machine but if you want to purchase these separately you can buy a two pack of these cartridges for i believe 17 dollars i will link those in the description so this is kind of a cool idea and it actually does work very well uh, it still works even several weeks later so i haven't had any issues with smell which is pretty important because anytime you buy a new shark vacuum they smell awful I don't know why that is, it's probably the smell of the plastic and the manufacturing process that goes through the plastic, and you smell that when you first turn on the machine. So as you use it more and more and fill it up with dirt, this odor neutralizing cartridge actually does what it says on, well, on the cartridge. It neutralizes the odors. It's not adding any freshness or adding any sort of fake smells. 
it just seems to neutralize the odors, which is exactly as advertised. So I'm personally pretty happy with this odor neutralizing tr technology. I suspected it to be a gimmick, but it actually does work very well. It's just a matter of if you want to actually engage in that added expense, or if you'd rather just do something else like putting a dryer sheet in the bin, sucking up laundry beads, or, you know, uh, installing Febreze filters. So you have other options to neutralize odors, but this is the OEM solution, and it actually does work pretty well. So it is a fun little feature. It's not a reason to upgrade to this vacuum in of itself. It just simply isn't because, again, you can get odor neutralizing uh, functionality out of other solutions, but it is a nice little touch. And for the price of this vacuum, it is a nice little bonus. Once you want to install this cartridge, you just line up the arrows, push it in until it's flush, and twist it all the way and push this cap down. Finally, we're going to talk about a couple little extra bits about the Stratos, including the warranty and the LED headlights, and then we're going to go ahead and wrap up this review. So I did forget to mention that there are LED headlights on the front power nozzle, and those do work very well. If you get a jam in your brush roller, those LED headlights will actually turn red. And once you do that, you'll need to shut off the machine and make sure that there isn't any obstruction in the brush roller. And if there is, then you may need to either change the setting that you have the brush roller on, on the handle, or call Shark and try to get that figured out. Now, unfortunately, if you do have any problems with the brush roller, Shark will not take care of you, as the Shark, for some reason, considers the entire power nozzle a wear item, including the brush roller. So Shark has specifically designed the main red brush roller on this unit to not be replaceable, and the way it's designed, you have to replace the entire cleaner head if the brush roller fails, which is even more of a problem considering the fact that Shark often advertises their VIP five or seven year warranty on all of their flagship uprights, but in practice, if you try to collect on that warranty, they actually downgrade you to the main limited warranty that doesn't include coverage of the powerhead, despite the advertising saying that if anything goes wrong, they will take care of it. So there's a lot of blatant false advertising there that I don't support whatsoever. There's also the issue that, that again, like I mentioned, the powerhead isn't covered under warranty. And so if you have any issues with the brush roller, even if the machine is only a couple months old, I've seen a lot of reviews where Shark has been telling customers that they have to buy a brand new powerhead for their, in some cases, only few month old machine that supposedly has a five year warranty. Very shady. But the good news is that at least with all the other components like the main suction motor, the bin, the hose, the wand, etc., Shark will replace any of those parts under warranty and generally with no fuss whatsoever. And unlike other companies, you don't need to provide any sort of receipt or proof of purchase. It's still not quite as good as Dyson's warranty, which I'm only mentioning because they're a direct competitor. Now, Dyson's warranty will actually cover power heads, and their warranty is a lot more forgiving and a lot more repair friendly than Shark's warranty, so keep that in mind. If you are concerned about warranty and longevity of your vacuum, then a Shark is not a good option. The build quality on this, while it is better than the previous Apexes, it's still not perfect, but it is a good improvement considering the $500 price tag. The plastics, with the exception of this filter cover, appear to be much better quality, although it is worth noting that this silver finish on the sides here are very prone to getting scratched up very easily. So the actual finish and paint on it is still relatively cheap. And also edge cleaning on this is not very great either because of the dual brush roller design. Thought I'd throw that out there. Now, one thing that I'd also like to mention is the reason why I got this machine in the first place. I actually did not pay full price for this machine. And I know I mentioned earlier that I didn't get the attachments that I was advertised, and I'm only mentioning that because the representative told me that my replacement would be coming with all the attachments from the listing. And why I also didn't expect to get the steam mop that this model normally comes with, because I was getting it as a replacement vacuum. Hopefully that makes sense. So, with this machine, uh, the machine is supposed to come with a lot of attachments, I already mentioned that, but the $500 price tag that you pay for this is, sorry, I just got completely sidetracked. Let me scratch that and redo that. Sorry, someone was calling me and it distracted me. So <laughs> what I was going to talk about actually was uh, if you, whenever I was trying to get this machine initially, whenever it first came out, Shark refused to actually provide a review sample for the channel. 
unless I applied for a sponsorship or I would be paid. And after telling Shark that I wasn't interested in a paid sponsorship, but I was only interested in receiving the vacuum for review purposes, they decided to discontinue responding to my emails. So uh, that kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. Of course, as a consumer, you're not going to worry about that. But the fact that they wouldn't apply, that they would, excuse me, that they wouldn't provide review units to creators unless they were willing to be paid for that is kind of shady because it's clearly trying to only provide samples to those that would that would be biased in favor of Shark because they'd be getting a paycheck from them. So the only reason why I got this machine is because one of my previous Shark machines, the ZU560 Navigator Liftaway 0M Speed, had actually died. What happened with it is after after two years of having the machine and it get, being a replacement direct from Shark, the vacuum actually shot a spark out of the power button and the motor and the brush roll actually died as a result because the arc and electricity both shocked me and caused you know, electrical problems with the machine. Uh, Shark did replace it with a new vacuum obviously, so credit where credit is due, but that's not the first time I've heard of that problem. I've heard so many customers report safety issues with Sharks and Shark has been under many recalls for their previous Power Lift Away series models having electrical issues that leads to sparking, arcing, and shocking, which none of those things are something you want out of a vacuum. I've noticed that even when vacuuming with it today, uh, a breaker in my house actually blew in the other room that's on the other side of my living room, something that no other vacuum has done, uh, even vacuums that used more amperages and more watts of power than the Shark does. So the actual motor quality and the electrical engineering on this on this unit, much like every other Shark, is very, very poor. And while Shark will take care of you warranty-wise, it will take a long time to do it. It'll be very problematic, and it's a very big safety risk. So with all of that in mind, it's really difficult for me to recommend this machine for, to anybody. But the only scenario where I would recommend this machine is if you're not worried about those electrical issues, I don't know why you wouldn't be, but if you weren't, and you are mainly wanting a machine that has a 30-foot cord that is bagless and performs very well on hard floors, but you are still determined to get an upright, you're not a fan of canisters or installing a central vacuum or going cordless, then the Stratos would be a pretty good option. I still don't think it's worth $500, but if you can get this for around $250, maybe $300, then I could see it potentially being a good deal, but you have to be very careful with it because, again, if you have any issues with the power head, you're not going to be covered under warranty, so buyer beware. So overall, this machine does not get my recommendation. I think that there are many other machines out there, especially in the $500 price range, that'll be, that be better. There's the Dyson Ball Animal 3, there's the Sebo Dart, there's the Recaro R25, there's just plenty of better options for carpets. and. Uh, overall options that would be better as well. So again, unless you have the very specific use case of, of having mostly hard floors and low pile area rugs in your home, uh, if you have that scenario, then the Stratos could be a good option if you find it for the right price. I know that sounds like a very complicated answer, but I'm trying to give this machine the benefit of the doubt because overall, I still don't think it's worth your money, and I still don't think it's a machine that I would recommend again, unless you're in that very specific use case. I have a lot of family members that have Shark Duo Cleans, specifically because they have mostly hard floors in their home, and they like the versatility of the power liftaway function. And that's perfectly okay. So if you're in that scenario where you want those features, then this is a good option, as long as you don't mind the reliability and you're careful with your machines. Otherwise, I would shop elsewhere. Anyways, this is- yeah,